Hey everyone, I hope you are having or had an amazing day and welcome back to Teenopolis. So today we are building this giant swing ride but before that I quickly want to mention yes I stated in previous episodes like oh by this episode or the next one we're going back into the water coaster and finishing that but I've honestly not been in like the right building mind for the coaster and I don't want to go back just because I said it in a previous episode because well I'm kind of perfectionistic or you know I want to do things right almost the first time and if I don't feel like building a certain thing and I force myself to do it I will probably just rush it just to get it done and that would result in kind of a bad ride so I'm going back to the coaster when like my building vibe changes I mean a lot of coasters are actually in that state now Anyway, for today's video, it's also, well, it's a longer video than usual. Basically, I wanted to have every, like, building, buildings aspect in this video and not have to, like, separate it in two videos where, like, the next video would have five to, let's say, three minutes of building a building and then the rest is all flowers and trees and all that kind of scenery. So please do tell me if you like longer videos because I mean it's not hard for me to do. I generally lose anything when it comes to time when I start building. So it's not hard for me to make longer episodes. But if you like it I will work it in. If you don't like it and like let's say the 20 minutes episodes it's also not a problem. This is just well it's kind of like an experiment. Anyway, for today's ride, or today's video, we are building this giant swing ride, which I haven't seen being used a lot. Well, I mean, the prefix already says a lot about why, well, why I think it's not used a lot, because it's ch So, <laughs> I don't know what happened with my voice there. Anyway, yes, it's giant. And even though, let's the ground space that it occupies already is giant but then you also have to account for like the range of the swings so you actually need even a larger space than just the ground floor that it provides so yeah for this swing you need a lot of space though it's more a lot of space in let's say the rectangular of like the range of the swings does it actually need to be that broad well it's still broad, but compared to the range of the swings, it's more rectangular than square-ish. Anyway, for the swings, because I obviously want a backstory for it, I thought of the story of Icarus, which I think is one of the more well-known, well, maybe not well more, so, maybe not one of the more well-known stories, but more of like the well-known parts of ancient Grecian legends and such but for the story it's basically just a story about of course overconfidence pride a little bit of greed because that's just everywhere in ancient Grecian stories but it's a lot of it goes on flight and well let's just say I think in this story the Greek gods or pantheon is less involved which is kind of strange but also kind of cool in a way because they are usually involved in a lot of stories so it's actually quite refreshing to have a story where they aren't as heavily involved in screwing people over anyway for the story of course it's about Icarus who you know flies to close to the sun his wings well I should probably start with the beginning so it begins with I'm going to butcher his name but Icarus's father Diadolus I think like he's he's the inventor of well the inventor role in most Greek legends or such but he built the labyrinth of Minos or probably well more well known as like the labyrinth of the Minotaur and for some reason 
I might have just not read the story properly, but for some reason, the Atlas and his son, because for some reason his son was also imprisoned, were imprisoned right after. If I'm correct though, it was because the Atlas gave the daughter of Minas spool of yarn so that Perseus, who was sent to kill the Minotaur, could find his way out of the labyrinth. So, again, I have no idea why Icarus was imprisoned, because it's basically his father's doing, but, I mean, Greek legends barely hold much logic, or at least modern day logic. But yeah, Icarus and his father, because I'm not going to try and pronounce his name anymore, were imprisoned, and of course, his father being the inventor and basically creating all kinds of stuff, devised a way to escape by making wings out of feathers and wax. I think some kind of maybe honey or candle wax. Anyway, he built wings and said to his son, don't get too close to the sea or don't get too close to the sun because that will basically disintegrate your wings and you will no dive to your death. Of course, I mean, this already sets it up. Icarus flew too close to the sun. The heat of the sun melted the wax, making his wings disintegrate. And he basically nosedived into the ocean and drowned. So from that story, I actually took more of like the imprisonment thing. Again, I'm on kind of a dark streak when it comes to building. So, right now, with the, well, cube building, I would say, right now I'm building some kind of prison tower, because why not? I mean, the story involves, you know, jumping off the roof and flying away, though uh, there's no possible way here to get to the roof, but at least the highest part of the prison tower is some kind of giant cage something along that lines and yeah I say there's no logic to Greek history or Greek history Greek legends and stories there's also mostly no logic to whatever I built so I think that's why I relate to Greek legends and such as much as I do but for the tower it's a little bit, well, I've just seen that when I want to build a building that's, you know, not a block, my most used option is actually to build a tower right next to it or some kind of like, well, towery like structure. I mean, it does break up the building or in a way adds to the building so that's not just a block. But I should probably get some other way to break a building up so that's not as blockish. But for this ride, because the ride is giant, this tower actually works quite well to slightly even out the ride so that it, well, it doesn't look as giant. So that uh, people are tricked into thinking that the ride isn't as giant and then they shit your pants when they are on the ride and see that's actually taller than I think it is. Also, you might, well, you probably already saw at the beginning, the ride is on a hill, which, uh, I mean, is okay. It's, it looks great when viewing from the gate of the pharaohs. <laughs> yeah, again, I built everything in Theonopolis, basically so that it looks great from a certain angle. But anyway, because it's on a hill, but the hill is... Well, it's not that large, it's actually, I kind of took reference to like the hill from the Lion King with like the giant outcropping or overbearing thing. And yeah, when the swings, I already told you guys like there's a bit of like a range to the swings that go over the ground space that the ride occupies. But because of the giant range, part of like when you go farther up on like 
well the front of the ride you actually go over the hill so you're actually even higher and uh, yeah I'm probably never going to ride this ride ever I don't well I've actually never seen a ride like this so I'm safe with that but also because my classes were just well they would uh, repeat the story of Icarus and fly off and then probably nose dive into the water like nose dive into the water right before the pharaohs so yeah also again I'm on a well some kind of dark spooky streak one building so I thought ah uh, prison tower nah not spooky enough need something else what do I need giblets still sounds like some kind of cat food in my brain but I think that's the correct word for it Maybe not the right pronunciation, but I mean, I'm never really known for cor correctly pronunciating words. But first I thought, mm, what do I want to, you know, do with these giblets? And I already say it in its plural, well, plural form, because, yeah, I, um, I built like, almost like wind chime feeling giblets yeah I mean you do increase the amount of prisoners you can house and when thinking of giblets you won't really well should probably stop myself here before you guys think I'm a psychopath <laughs> but they are fancy looking giblets <laughs> in some way <laughs> Uh, it's yeah I'm really on a dark building spree but I used the well Blanco given giblets as a reference and you can really see that that one is really supposed to go up somewhere high or far because it's enormous and with perspective that would look okay because if it's somewhere up high or far away it always looks smaller <laughs> But if you put it, let's say, on the top of this Q building, it still looks giant. So yeah, also for the floor of the giblet, again, I'm not a psychopath, but I just wanted something even more, well, scary. So the floor of the giblet is also just completely open. So uh, don't slip. I say that as if I would put any of you guys in a giblet. <laughs> Of course I wouldn't. Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, I already said I pretty much made wind chimes or a wind chime sort of thing out of these giblets. And uh, yeah, I'm not joking. <laughs> I have no idea why I did that. But it just, it looked fun and well, this prison kind of thing because again I basically just went with like the imprisonment thing of the story of Icarus it the prison isn't that large so you need some space and these giblets work for that and uh, it also looks kind of like a giant chandelier of just giblets how many times have I said giblets if any of one well any of you guys have kept track of how many times I've said giblets do let me know down below but uh, yeah today's video is just weird and somewhat dark although I have not heard like that scream thing I heard in the when I built for the last video so I'm good that demon hasn't killed me yet also what I'm building right now is just a giblet that's well fell to the ground because I just felt like it I like to just build like tiny little scenes that if this was let's say a real park only like the seasoned visitor of the park would actually know that this is there but I well I went completely into a dark zone when building this fallen giblet because I thought 
huh, if this giblet fell and, well, you would probably break a leg or something or an arm or something like that. And I thought like, no, I don't want this guy to survive. Of course not. So, uh, yeah, I basically built two legs, made those two legs still sit inside the giblet in built a little metal piece of like the bottom of the giblet so that it looks like he's uh, well he's free but also from his legs again I am on a weird dark building spree but this little metal piece basically just split him in half when he fell so I even made it more horrifying because his Upper body is a little bit away from the giblet, so he was still alive when he fell and was basically split in half. Yes, I am. Um, I'm not a psychopath, but for some reason this just clicked with me. But now for teaming the actual rides, I, well, I first wanted to basically team the entire tower or the entire towers but for some reason this reddish color of the right I just wanted it to be seen so I'm only building up until the black part of the tower stops so it's like halfway up and then well it also gives a little bit more heighty feeling to the actual prison tower but this, these towers were, well, I wouldn't say annoying, but I like to use just the normal grid piece walls lately, and yeah, these towers didn't allow me to. I needed to build like custom walls just to fit it entirely into that, uh, in so that the tower wouldn't be shown, but. I kind of think it worked out pretty good because now the towers aren't really just straight up blocks. Yeah, I kind of really don't like it when my buildings look really, you know, rectangular or square is block. Though that would be pretty historically accurate for it to look kind of more blocky, but I just really don't like that. Except when it's, let's say, a temple or something like that. Or some other similar structure like that. Because, well, a Greek temple, it's kind of saved by the amount of decorations in the pediment and the frieze and such. So, yeah, those are probably like the only buildings where I'm like, this can look as squarish as possible. Well, not square because more rectangular. Anyway, for the tower, as I said, the, well, the towers of the actual ride itself aren't straight up, so, well, they need custom walls, and I really like them, but also, I still want to somehow connect the towers to the prison tower, but the giblet wind chimes are in the way. I never thought I would say that. Still sounds like cat food in my eyes or my brain. Why did I say in my eyes? I have no clue. I think this is like the part of the episode where I become slightly less coherent. Although I think every episode is a bit like that. But. As I said before, I'm only going to team it up to, well, when the black part of the right tower stops. Because I really like this reddish stone that the right has. And it's slightly, well, it just looks better for some reason. And yeah, pardon me for this weird, uh, well, extension. It looks a little bit weird, but again, somehow it works. Somehow. And that's usually most of my buildings. Somehow it works. Somehow it doesn't look like crap. 
But for the other side of the tower, or the other tower, it's basically just this tower but spun around 180 degrees. So I'm not going to go too much into that. But I've also, well, I wanted to build a reference to the labyrinth because that's a big part in Theodolus' story. Which is kind of connected to Icarus because, again, Theodolus butchering his name again, but still, is his father, so they are always connected. But for the, well, labyrinth, because I'm not going to build a labyrinth, because that would be, well, that would be quite something. And... I don't want to extend Tinopolis into 200 or, well, too much over 100 episodes. No, we're actually quite filling out Tinopolis right now. Yeah, this ride actually took, well, it's a giant swing ride, so as I said before, it takes pretty much a lot of space. But I did have to modify the hill because I wanted to have these... Well, I don't know where I got the idea to add these pillars in front of it, but it just looks a little bit more intimidating because of it. But yeah, the ride is actually slightly going over the labyrinth. And underneath the ride is the entrance to the labyrinth. Which is... Um, yeah, did I already mention I'm a little bit more on a spooky vibe when it comes to building? Adding some rocks, because why not, just to make it a little bit more edgy and you're still, when you're on the swing ride, go over it. So you're still, uh, yeah, again, I have a fear of heights, but also I would lose my glasses, so you won't ever see me on this ride, besides admiring it from afar. But now for the actual entrance to the labyrinth. It's basically just a wall with giant doors. Again, I didn't want to go and build the actual labyrinth because that would be way too much. And I still think that by the end of, well, Teonopolis, my PC is going to start to cry and I don't want that to happen right now. So, yeah. For the actual, well, doors to the labyrinth, I basically use this wooden porch thing, well, I just think of a porch when I see these wooden pieces, but I use these for the other temples that I've built on the Acropolis as well, and they just work out really great because they are sectioned off and it looks a bit like ancient or older doors where you have like, there's just sections of wood like just square well i don't know really how to explain it but it just looks somewhat good then you see me in vain try to attempt and make a chandelier and then in the end i already can spoil this i just went with the standard planko chandelier turned it off and stuck some lights right above the chandelier so that looks on but that color is a little bit different and that's actually with most of the lighting in Tinopolis. most of the seeable lighting is actually turned off and there's just these well these area lights that are behind it because i want a certain color of lighting but back to the door because with those chandeliers it looks pretty well, it looks spooky to me, like anything with chandeliers for me looks kind of spooky. But then, also, of course, the labyrinth is more well known to house the Minotaur. And even though this is going to be like the labyrinth of Theonopolis, I wanted to have something in there. So, this is probably the first video where you'll ever see me play with, well, effects and triggers and such. Or at least to the extent that I'm doing right now. Because, yeah. This is a labyrinth where they don't feed the Minotaurs. Young boys or girls. I 
Don't know which one they sent to the Minotaur in, well, the stories. But at least, it looks like he is angry and bashing on the door. But anyway, with the Minotaur being held captive in the labyrinth, that's going to be it for today's video. In the next video I will do the scenery and nature and some little bits around this place. But for today, that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, don't forget to subscribe and like it. And I will, well, I wish you a, a great day and I hope to see you back in the next one. Bye bye.